Hello, welcome to my workshop. Um, back to do my first unboxing video. Um, noticed these on Hobby King the other day. I think they're new to the UK warehouse. It's a uh, EDF F16. Uh, so I snapped one up. I just got the kit version, and I thought I'd do an unboxing, show you what they're like. Right. Didn't come taped up, so no cutting of tape needed. Right, here we go. Right, got the uh, stickers here. Get it out. Oh, got a knife. Cut that out. Um, I have to say I don't really like the uh, red and white colour scheme that seems to be uh, in all these models. It's um, I don't know. I could have done a you know, military colour version of it. Uh, that's all the stickers there. Yeah, they look alright. Um, right. Just put that there, stay there. Right, let's have a look. Here we go. Here's the fuselage. It's actually a bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. Sort of. I thought it was going to be a bit smaller. Let's uh, get this out of the bag. Some little bits of tape. There we go. Now, I guess that's detachable then. You must have to glue that in once your fan's in. I hope you can still get the fan out afterwards, just in case. Right. Blimey. Yeah. Check some of the joints. See how it's... Yeah, it seems pretty well glued together. Oop, there's a bit there. There's a bit just here. Not quite glued properly, but it's easily fixed. The rest of it seems right in. Mm. The nose comb looks a bit a little bit naff. Um, I suppose it's alright. One touch on the ground is going to break probably, but right. There you go. Removable battery bay, so you can probably say that you can glue it to wherever you want in the right position. Um, let's see how the uh, towels and that fix on. Looks pretty snazzy. Yeah, I might end up doing a, um, a spray job on it rather than using the stickers. I think that would be worthy of a decent spray job. Right. What have we got here? In the canopy, Ooh. Ooh, a couple of magnets there, a couple of little tiny thin magnets. It's a nice little snazzy cockpit. If you've got a pilot, you could probably put a pilot in there. Oops, stick the falling down, never mind. Yeah, that's 
a reasonably good shape in it. Nicely moulded. So I guess that you, you know, little little dimples there, little dimples at the front. That's probably where the magnets go, the front and back. And then uh, you probably put a bit of metal or screw in there. And then uh, that will fit down on there. But how will the seats on there? I don't know. It's not bad. Not how I would have built it. It's not a bad design. Right. Let's find the tail surfaces. There's a wrapping. No. It's the tail fin. It's a bit boxy there. Not bad. short and stubby aren't they? I suppose they are on an F-16 though aren't they? Right. I'll get these out carefully. Pre-cut for servos. The uh, control horns aren't fitted, so I don't know if it comes with a control horn. Oh, there is a pack of bits there. We'll look at that in a second. Oh, that's a that's different. So it's quite. An up and down cut out wedge. So, with a bit of glue, that would probably be pretty strong, wouldn't it? Up and down wedge. Might need a, a bit of gap there, might need a bit of trimming so that, that seats together properly. a bit worried about. I don't know how strong these are going to be the way that they're mounted. Let's see how, how they're mounted. Yeah. Bit of a ding in one of them. Yeah. Edges need trimming from where it come out of the mould. Bubbles on the edge. Right. So that's probably that one. Hold it properly. No, it looks like it needs. Looks like it needs a drill running through the holes. Like this. Yeah. Looks like there's glue and stuff blocking it, so looks like it needs to run a drill through the hole before you can get the tower fins on.
Ah, that's interesting. So it looks like you have an option of having it uh, an all moving, or you can just glue the whole thing on and uh, cut that bit of ply there, and then you can fit it like a normal elevator. That's it, that's interesting, that's a different way of doing it. It gives you a choice then. So you can either have it fixed in like that and have it all moving towel thin like a normal one or just glue the whole thing, glue that in, cut out a bit of ply and it looks like it's hinged. It's hinged there so you can have an all, uh, just the normal movement which might be what I do because I'm not quite sure about this all moving tail fin especially as uh, I probably won't be fitting the undercarriage on it um, purely because uh, I don't know how well it would take off the grass my, my flying fields grass there is no tarmac runway so yeah I'll probably just be uh, hand launching it hopefully it's wide enough or my hand's wide enough to uh, grip the bottom so I may do that I may glue the whole thing to, on and just hinge like a uh, normal elevator right now I've got a hole there for the fan it is a 64mm fan Hmm, that's a bit rough. That's been that's been carved out. That has. That's not moulded on that section. That's been carved out. Right. Look at the accessory pack. wheels oh it's got little tiny kites I might nab those and use those for something else so yeah it's nice nice stiff wire undercarriage tiny wheels there I mean unless I put bigger wheels on it I don't know but I mean they always, they always look rubbish in the air with fixed undercarriage a jet plane does so I'll probably just hand launch it. Uh, hmm. Bit of plastic there. There's one or two bits. That's just one. No idea what that's for. <laughs> Got a bulge on it, so I don't know what that's for. Hmm, interesting. A uh, couple of bits of plywood here. Don't know what they're for either. Have to read the manual. See what they're for. Uh, they got some push rods there. Only one of those, so that must be for the rudder. And there's two there. They must be for the ailerons. Don't appear to have any. Doesn't appear to have any push rods for the elevator. Strange. Let's, let's have a look, see how long they are. Oh no, they're for the elevator. So those those ones are for the elevator. 
but there doesn't appear to be any push rods for the ailerons. So, I guess you have to make your own ailerons push rods. Definitely nothing else in here. Okay. They're a bit thin and weedy anyway, so I probably wouldn't use them anyway. Um, I've got more magnets. Let's cut more magnets there. A little bit bigger. Um, another couple of grab screw collets. A little round ply washer. And yeah, you've got a steerable nose leg wheel. So you can use that if you want. And it's sprung. It's sprung loaded. So that's not bad. Like I said, I probably won't be using the uh, undercarriage anyway. Uh, let's see if I can find a fan unit I might use in this. Um, I managed to buy the last Hayoi 64mm 7 blade fan on Hobby King. Because um, I bought it and literally checked it out later, no more in stock. So <laughs> I think I got the la very last one. Uh, so it's, like I said, it's a 7 blade fan. And what I bought for it is. Uh, one of these motors I've been seeing on eBay and the specs on them are pretty good. I've only done one motor test on a 36mm uh, in runner. This one is a what was it? 2948 size. Um, and this only took a 28mm motor. So I actually had to, um, with a little Dremel, take out all the inside um, and I, I think I measured this and this was, was actually slightly over 29mm um, so I actually had to take out over a millimetre of plastic out there before that would fit and it's literally just snug in there um, so hopefully I can use this motor in this fan um, it has made the plastic a bit flimsy um, so what I'm going to do yeah, and I've gone gone through a little bit, one bit. Uh, what I'm going to have to do is I've got some fiberglass cloth, and I will fiberglass round the outside of the tube, and make sure it meets up with the the fins on the inside, and that should put a lot more of the strength back in. Uh, and it's going to need it because this motor is. 4,800 kV and can take up to a thousand watts it says on the spec <laughs> so I don't know what it will run uh, power wise uh, on 3 cell uh, from what I've seen of other people using a different motor of, of 4,800 kV um, tends to draw a lot of current on 3 cell so I've seen some people melt the motors down trying to use 3 cell on them. Um, but this can take a thousand watts. So, I don't know. Although it does say it's only rated for 3 cell. But, um, depending what current it's drawing on 3 cell, I may end up putting a 4 cell on it as well. So, <laughs> this will be a rocket ship if I can run this on 4 cell. It would be crazy. Right, so I've got a bit of work to do on the fan, and hopefully I can get this done one day. Um, I've got so many models now uh, waiting to be built. Uh, I've got a few EDFs, but I thought I'd get this. It was only, I think I got it for forty-three quid, forty-three quid, forty-five quid. Um, don't know what that is in dollars but yeah so that seems all right um supposed to take was it nine gram metal gear servos 
I couldn't really find any decent nine gram metal geared, geared servos, so I'm going to bung in um, uh, my twelve gram, well twelve and a half gram uh, metal geared servos, and with this fan unit, I'm probably going to need it. Right, I just hope it don't weigh too much because. It's quite a short wingspan, isn't it? But I suppose it is on the F-16, like I said. Right, that was my unboxing of the new Hobby King 64mm EDF F-16. Right, I'll maybe do some more unboxing videos. Uh, but that's my first one done. So, if you like this, click like and subscribe. And you'll see a lot more of my models flying unboxing, motor tests and all sorts of other things. Thank you very much. See you later.